Hey everyone, Tim here. The next three modules will be following on from the fundamentals of trailer music, but in much finer detail. This module will be focusing on writing trailer music on orchestral forces. In this lecture we're starting off with an intro, and the next two will be looking at the other main sections on the track, including an outro. The idea of these three modules is not only to look at things from module 2 in more detail, but to cement and enforce everything you've learnt so far. You'll notice at the top here, I have markers about phrases. They're just little checkpoints to help follow along with the track. So what is a good way to start a successful orchestral track? Let's start by taking a listen. So as you can probably tell just by looking, there's not much in terms of hybrid effects. If we want this to be an orchestra driven track, then that's something we need to think about as we're writing, otherwise it will start to delve into hybrid trailer music territory. So try and limit yourself to just big drums, the odd boom or hit here and there, and perhaps a couple of rises and whooshes. This is still trailer music, so we need to include some hard hitting effects. Just make sure that they're sounding clean and they're not too heavily processed. The most important thing to consider when writing any kind of trailer track is to find a pattern and stick with it. As I've mentioned previously in module 2, avoid fitting in as many ideas as possible otherwise it starts to sound like a cinematic score, which is no good for trailers. This is a really easy trap to fall into, especially when writing an orchestral track. Let's look for some patterns, starting with the piano. So we start our piece really simple, an 8 part chord progression with 2 notes per chord. Essentially this can also be considered two 4 bar chord progressions as I'm repeating the first and last chords and replacing the middle two chords with chords that share similar notes, so it's more variation. Each phrase I add a new element to the piano. The first time round, bar 9, is 2 E's an octave apart on beats 1 and 5 every other bar. The second time round, bar 18, is a variation on the octave apart, E, and thicker chords. The third time round is only slightly different following the chord structure. This is all about development, and doing it little bits at a time can go a long way. So that's the piano, let's check out the strings starting with the shorts. I wrote a one bar pattern and repeated it, very simple. To make it more interesting, it grows dynamically, particularly in the last two bars, and a higher octave is introduced. Nothing too super intense, we can always develop it later. The purpose of these is introducing the main rhythm of the track. The 7-8 pulse is now clear. Let's check out the long strings.
Similarly to the short strings, nothing intense, think of this as a general rule for your introduction. To make things flow better with each other, I'm bringing them in 4 bars earlier than the start of the next chord progression. Strings are less overpowering than brass, relatively speaking, which makes them far more versatile. I'm using the long strings in the intro to back up the chord progression we first heard in the piano. Again, we're building dynamically and building the chords further up the range of the instrument. Check out the dynamics here, how they swell in and out every two bars. This is a pretty solid technique in all kinds of music, not just trailer music. It adds so much more realism than just having them all the same dynamic, and it also allows the track to breathe a bit more. Whilst the short and long strings are sharing similar frequencies for the track, I want the intention mainly on the long strings because, at the moment, they're more melodically and harmonically interesting, while the short strings are essentially just on a loop. And this leaves us with percussion. So here I'm using purely orchestral percussion. We're going to save the juicy hits for later on in the track. The purpose of the percussion in the intro here is to add some ambience to the track. A couple of cymbal swells leading into both chord progressions 1B and 2B. The first is a tam tam, the second is a cymbal and the tam tam. Bass drums have a pretty decent amount of low end with a good attack on them, so it makes them ideal for this sort of subtle but pumping boom feel. Again, keeping things simple, bass drum hits are every two bars until the last couple where the rhythm develops a little bit more, and cymbals are played at the bottom of their dynamic range every eight or four bars. So to round things off, here's a few things to think about in your intro. If you're going to have both short and long strings, think about which one is more important to your track and decide how to let one shine over the other. Limit hybrid sounds, but don't ignore them completely. Obviously I haven't talked about any in this section, but we'll be covering them in the next couple of lectures. Make subtle variations in your repetitions and developments. This is what makes the build of your track more special. And as with most styles of trailer music, don't overdo it for the intro, we're just starting to build up here. That covers the basic orchestral introductions in trailer music. The next lecture, we'll be looking at the midsection. See you then.